Rusty Labiskakhni was a successful Zimbabwean businessman with one of the most popular fishing resorts in the country. Framed by a poacher, he was convicted of a murder that never happened. He spent 10 years in a Zimbabwean prison, sharing a single cell with 78 men, no more than 33 centimeters to sleep in. Somehow, he survived. He survived the overcrowding, starvation, disease. Facing a challenge, Rusty is gonna show us how he faced the ultimate. My life started from humble beginnings to great success in the safari industry. I had five fully operational safari camps, a fishing resort on Lake Kariba, and was flying my own aircraft. During the land invasion chaos in Zimbabwe, against police evidence, without a body, and on presumptions, I was convicted of drowning a poacher and sentenced to 15 years in prison, of which five were suspended, for a crime that never took place. I shared a cell with 78 other inmates, 13 meters long, three meters wide. Each person had 33 centimeters of space marked out on the walls in chalk. We all faced the same direction. When you turned over, it was all together. As cushioning against the cold concrete floor, you'd fold two of your paper-thin, worn-out, lacerated blankets several times to fit your space, then covered yourself with a third one. Can you imagine the discomfort? Not even the breath you take is your own. No space and packed so close together that what someone else exhales, you inhale. Can anything be further removed from freedom than that? We had no basins or taps in the cells and only one set of clothing. How would you like to wear the clothes you're wearing now for six months without a change? Then in an effort to retain your dignity, having to wash them in a well-used toilet. The humiliation was beyond comprehension. In 2005, during the Zim dollar crash, Harare city ran out of water. For three years, while in Chikurubi maximum security prison, each prisoner was allocated only one plastic cup of water a day. That was to drink, clean your teeth, wash your face, bath, everything, for three years. But all that being said, I believe that behind every severity lies an opportunity. And that experience gave me the opportunity to get to know hidden attributes about myself and time to consider some really important things in life. My life in chains taught me many lessons, and that's what I'd like to share with you now. My first life lesson was about forgiveness. The humiliation of being labeled a murderer in terrible conditions were extremely hard to deal with as was the pain of my bitterness, anger, hatred, frustration, and revenge for what they'd done and were doing to me. I hated them bitterly, and would lie there for hours wishing every terrible thing on each of them in turn, the poacher, the police, the judge, the ministry, and all who were involved in my conviction. In the end, I was only hurting myself. I was carrying all that in my head and beating myself up for nothing. The single biggest lesson I learned in prison was true forgiveness. I now know what Nelson Mandela meant by forgiveness. Gratitude was another huge lesson I learned. We all want too much in our lives, concentrating on what we haven't got instead of being grateful for what we have. When there's no food, no water, and people are dying all around you, you become grateful for the fact that you're still breathing and another day is a blessing. When you're lying in a cell with 78 other people and your breath is not even your own, gratitude suddenly has a different meaning altogether. Freedom. Even when we are not in prison, there are ways in which we imprison ourselves. In sour business partnerships, badly selected careers, being obsessed with the ambition in the corporate world, even unhappy marriages. Freedom is not just not being in prison. Freedom is the ability to make a choice and act on it. Freedom is letting go of what you can't control. Freedom is forgiveness. Freedom is being free from negativity. Freedom brings health. If you can be free in all areas of your life, then you'll reach your full potential. 
I was fortunate. I'd made it big, was very successful, and possibly during that time, I became a bit arrogant. But that experience has made me realize that I'm just a normal human being, that you can't value your life based on your title, your success, or your material possessions. If you had everything taken away from you right now, who would be left? What would people see looking at you as a person? We need to look at our core values more deeply and see how we can elevate ourselves to rediscover who we can really be. Thank you. Rusty, welcome to Gurus. Thank you, Doug. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. I, uh, I don't get it. I don't. I don't know how you survive that. 33 centimeters, mm. right? That's, you have to, you, on your side. On your side, everyone. Without any sense of when you're going to get out, knowing that you are there. How do you, I mean, I, I get it. I, I got your three keys. We're going to talk about them. Yeah. But, I mean, are there not points where you just want to give up, just want to die? No. Isn't that easier? No way. Then they've taken more from me. They took 10 years. They took all my businesses, everything. So right now, people say, how did you forgive? I don't give them one more second of my thought. All of that is behind me. In front is happiness, love, and, and uh, ambition. I'm still driven. I want to I get to the top. I want to do this. And I want to share my... The reason I do this is to share and change lives, and I'm doing it all the time too. And so many people after my talks come to me, and the biggest thing they ask is, how did you do that? How do you forgive like that? How can you just let all that go? And the first thing you have to ask yourself is, uh, what, what are the prisons of our own making mm. that are keeping us trapped in the past, and how do we let go of that which no longer serves us? And, and I get that. I mean, it's a powerful spiritual principle. In fact, hearing your story reminded me of Nelson Mandela saying, you know, as I walked out those prison gates, yeah. I knew that if I was still holding on to my bitterness, yeah. I would actually still be in prison. Yeah. So you have to let go, right? Resentment is like taking poison, thinking it's going to kill the other person, yeah. right? It really <laughs> is toxic to ourselves, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. But that ability to let go, I mean, I know when... You know, I feel a grudge towards somebody in business or even a friend. It's like, I kind of know I need to let it go, but it's, mm. it's tough to let it go. And, and yet, did you, I mean, are you somebody who, were you always able, I mean, through the prison experience, mm. were you, did you feel bitterness? Did you feel resentment? Or in, was the it first, in the first two years, um, Justin, I was beating myself up big time. And then I, re I realized that, and it was just like, like that. I just said to myself, they've all forgotten about me long ago. Here I am beating myself up for nothing, and they, blissfully unaware of the <laughs> evil I wished on them every day. Huh. So, that was, so it was almost it was, it an just, instant realization for did. you. It was like a light bulb. And I, I remember exactly the day, and I just said, and I remember what I said. I said, just let the Lord take care of them. <laughs> and let me just get through the path that's been put before me. And the day I did that, it was like, Okay. And that revelation, did it just happen? Did something spark it? No, it was just enough. It was just draining. Just, just enough. It was just yeah. finished, yeah. Wow. And yeah. What a lesson for all of us who are, I mean, we might not go through, you know, anything close to that, but how many of us are holding on to resentments and grievances that you, 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 your point about forgiveness is it's, you're not condoning what happened, right? No. You're, not, you, you're, not, you're not saying, but you're saying, I'm going to give up that resentment. That's yeah. over. So once you can forgive, then another big important part for me was being grateful for everything I have, what I've achieved, and who I am. Mm. Mm. And it puts you in a different mindset. So focusing on what you have rather than what you don't, because you yeah. can sit and talk about yeah. everything that's wrong, or you can say what's right. Well, and that's, I mean, you're in a prison with yeah. 75 men, and you're yeah. looking at what's right, well, what? I'm breathing, I'm alive. <laughs> but buddy, if I, had, if I was so strung up on for example, in, in business, strung up on my vision of getting out, getting out, I'm gonna, how can I get out of here? 
I wouldn't have made it. You have to, you're there, you're alive, you're healthy. You know, if I've got air to breathe and something to, to eat and, and place to lie down, then that's okay. So Let is me that, get through this moment right now. Is that because maybe, that, I can't change that. Right. And is that maybe a lesson for all of us about we get so fixated on the goal, on yeah. the vision, yeah. and, and, and the fact that we don't have it, which actually puts us in a state of lack, yes. as opposed to saying, Proverbs, who is rich, he who rejoices in his lot. Yeah. I'm going to rejoice yeah. in what I have. Yeah rather yeah. than, than, than whinge and whine and complain and moan about what I don't, right? And once you're grateful for that, it'll put you in a different, a different place to now receive and, and be more productive. Rusty, what do you think of people who are complaining because you know, they, they, their tire went <laughs> flat or because you know, they didn't get that promotion <laughs> and life is so bad and such a... I mean, you, what goes in your head, man? No, you no, must I be like... It all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it must be like a Monty Python. You're like, dude, <laughs> you're complaining because your, your washing machine's broken. I right? know, it's crazy. It, and it's given me such a different outlook on life, Justin. I mean, people say, how can you be so happy? And I say, why not? Make me feel good. And you do glow. I mean, the man glows, right? And this is not just today. Every time you see Rusty, you, you exude more joy than most people who haven't been through anything that you have. Do you not have any post-traumatic stress? You know, no. post-traumatic stress disorder is when you've had a very traumatic yeah. experience and you have flashbacks and no. dreams and nightmares. You don't have that. So many people said, don't you want to go for counseling and stuff? And I said to them, which counselor is going to teach me anything? <laughs> <laughs> now, there is a, a concept that has emerged in the field now, PTG, post-traumatic growth. So yeah. people actually go through a trauma and emerge better you, would you say you're a better person? I am, definitely. Yeah. I was a good at before that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but there's always room for improvement, Rusty. <laughs> and, Absolutely. Uh, and what you now provide to us is a shining example. But this didn't just happen, right? No. You had to focus your yeah. mind. You needed to cut out the negativity. Absolutely. Focus on the gratitude. Mm -hmm. Wow. All of those things, they made a big difference for me. And to all of us, thank you for sharing thank your you, life. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.